Are you looking for the perfect air fryer? I have a secret for you. The perfect air fryer is the one that has the features that you need so you actually use it. Today, I'm gonna to show you all of the options so you can decide which air fryer is best for you. My name is Kathy Yoder and my followers refer to me as the real air fryer queen. Now, I really don't like to brag, but I have personally unboxed, tested, and cooked with more than two dozen different types of air fryers. And I'm a busy mom of eight kids, and I really don't like to cook. But I discovered that using my air fryer not only made cooking more fun, it's healthier, and it's empowered my children to be more confident in the kitchen. But on top of all of that, because air fryers cook food so much faster, it means I have more time to do the things I actually like. No longer do you have to wait 15 minutes while your oven preheats. The air fryer will do it in zero to five minutes. No longer do sheet pan meals take 30 to 40 minutes to bake. I can cook them in the air fryer in about 15 minutes. So yes, using the air fryer is awesome and that's why you are watching this today. Whether you've got a large family or you're a solo cook or maybe you're a busy working person or a college student that's really limited on time or you're an empty nester that is sick and tired of cooking the same thing for the last 40 plus years. I'm gonna help you find your perfect air fryer. Are you ready? Let's go. Oh, and by the way, once you get your air fryer, make sure you come back to my channel because I have a lot of resources that are gonna help you use it. I will tell you more about those at the end of this video and down in the description box. The biggest decision you need to make is which type of air fryer do you want? There are pros and cons to both, but I gotta say I'm probably a little biased to one of them. You got your oven style that usually has a door that opens with racks and shelves. It looks a lot like your standard kitchen oven but it's more compact. The other type of air fryer is the basket style. Those are the ones that have a handle out front with a drawer that pulls in and out. And you'll find that they are more compact than the typical air fryer oven. If your main motivation for getting an air fryer is to cook food faster, then I highly suggest getting yourself a basket style air fryer. Because they are more compact than an air fryer oven, without a doubt, they are gonna cook faster. And in my opinion, the basket style air fryers are easier to clean and they're easier to handle. When I compare that to the air fryer ovens that I've tested, I find that in the ovens, the grease and the crumbs just get stuck on the door and the sides in the back of the oven and it's just a little bit more of a pain to pull all the racks out and wipe all the inside of the whole big fat oven. Whereas the basket, you can just wipe it with a paper towel, pop it in the sink, and it's so easy to clean. And the other big pro to using a basket style air fryer is that you don't have to use hot pads. You can just pull the drawer open when you're checking on the food or if you're flipping it or rotating it and close it back up. Whereas the oven style, you're gonna have to use hot pads, rotate racks, move food around, and I'll talk about this later, but these take less space on your countertop and they weigh less, so they're a lot easier to move around. The benefits of the air fryer oven is that you likely have more space to cook food. You could probably do like a large pizza or a full-size cake inside of it, but if you've got food on two different racks, you're going to have to pull those all the way out and rotate them so the food cooks evenly, which again means hot pads, it means crumbs landing on the door of the air fryer oven, and in my opinion, it's just a little bit more of a pain to use. Not to mention that they take longer to cook because it's such a large unit, it takes a lot more power and time to heat up the entire space. And honestly, in my big family, I'm usually cooking for about five to seven people each night, and in most cases, I can cook enough food for my family just using one of these six quart air fryer baskets. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit, so keep watching for details on sizing. And with all of that said, the worst part about these air fryer ovens, at least for the ones that I've tested, they emit a lot of heat. Like I will be standing like this far away from an air fryer oven and I'm feeling the heat. So if you have small little people running around, I don't recommend having these on your counter because they are hot to touch. So hopefully that little piece right there maybe led you to decide that you want a basket style air fryer, which is good because that's pretty much what I'm gonna talk about from here on out. Next, let's talk about air fryer size. When you're shopping or looking online, you're gonna see quarts, liters, all of this stuff. What really matters is that horizontal cooking space. Now, yes, I just told you that an air fryer oven with the shelves probably will have a little more space, but because they don't have any depth, you're really not gonna get 
that much more space compared to an air fryer with the drawer. With all of these air fryers, I really recommend going for something right around six quarts. Usually those are gonna be right around nine by nine inches square, which is awesome and a lot of space. And note that I recommend a square basket instead of a circular basket. You will not have as much usable space if you get a round basket. A nine by nine square basket is enough room, so if you're like a solo cook, you can still cook an entire meal, like you know, burger and fries or chicken and veggies, right next to each other side by side. And of course, if you are a larger family, there's plenty of room for side dishes, french fries, all of the great things. And let me just tell you, if you're wanting to go a little bit cheaper and a little bit smaller for your very first air fryer, I have never talked to anybody that had like a two or three or maybe even a four quart air fryer that loved using it all the time. In fact, majority of the conversations that I have with these people is that they ended up upgrading to a larger six quart air fryer. So basically, if you start with a pretty small air fryer, I'm gonna bet within a few months of consistent use, you're gonna upgrade to a larger air fryer. So just start with the six quart. If space is a big concern for you, stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm gonna give exact recommendations for like solo cooks, college students, families, tech lovers, all of that. It's coming at the end of this video. The next thing to consider is the wattage of your air fryer. No matter which air fryer you choose, if it's a six quart or higher, you want the wattage to be at least 1700. And that's because the larger that it is inside, the more power is needed to heat up that space. One time I tested out a 10 quart air fryer that had the racks in there but it was only 1500 watts so food took a lot longer to cook another time I tested out like a 26 quart air fryer oven and it was only like 1650 watts and it took forever to preheat a good rule of thumb is that if it's like four to five quarts 1500 watts is probably gonna be okay anything above five and a half, six quarts, you definitely wanna be 1700 watts. And again, just don't buy anything smaller than a four quart air fryer. I don't even know why they are produced. The next thing to factor in when you're making a decision on your air fryer is the space it's gonna take on your counter. Not only do you wanna look at the footprint of the air fryer, but also keep in mind how tall the air fryer is and where your cabinets land. When you're actually using your air fryer, you do wanna have some space back behind and over the top, so it's kind of more open area. And if you plan on storing it in a closet or a pantry or in a cupboard, make sure it's not too heavy. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure that if it's just a pain to pull in and out, you're gonna end up leaving it tucked away, you're gonna forget about it, and you're not gonna use it, and that's gonna be a waste of money. The next thing to look at is the interface and the ease of use. Just take a few minutes and look closely at the interface. Does it seem intuitive? I mean, at the very basic level, you really only need a power button, something to change the temperature, something to change the time, and a start button. But most air fryers do have preset buttons. They don't really change the cooking function inside of the air fryer, rather they're just one touch buttons that take you to a certain temperature and a time, but most air fryers will let you adjust the time or the temperature that you see. An even better air fryer will let you program these buttons yourself. In fact, most times I don't really agree with the presets that they have, so I just use my air fryer cheat sheet as a guide instead. By the way, you can snag this at airfryercheatsheet.com. Something else to think about is the maintenance and the cleaning of the air fryer. Most air fryer baskets and trays are dishwasher safe. You'll want to look at the manual to just be sure that the air fryer you're looking at says that it is dishwasher safe. But generally, honestly, I just always wash it off in the sink. I use Dawn Power Wash. It's super easy to clean my air fryer and they actually take up a lot of space in the dishwasher so I just hand clean instead but when I am hand cleaning the trays that have all of these little nooks and crannies and crevices are kind of a pain to clean at times also trays that have super thin wires are really hard to clean especially if you have like baked on grease or chicken skin or sauces they are just no fun to clean at all but most air fryers do have that non-stick coating so they often Oftentimes are really quite easy to clean. Unless you never clean it and you cook and cook and just the food gets baked on over and over and over, that's disgusting. Don't do that. It will be harder to clean. So just maintain it. You'll be a happier air fryer owner, I promise. A couple other things that are really my must-have features when I'm looking for an air fryer 
is it's got to have the automatic shut off feature. I'm so surprised when I'm testing out air fryers and I open them and the fan keeps blowing around. I just don't think that's a great idea. I don't know why they don't automatically stop. Majority of air fryers do have that safety feature, but it's just something to consider when you're shopping. The other thing to think about is the warranty that comes with the air fryer. The best warranty I've seen on an air fryer is a two year warranty, which is super awesome. Make sure you are purchasing from a strong, reputable brand. And for example, there are a ton of air fryers on Amazon. Just do your research, read through the whole description, and you could even see if they have a separate website that would have more information about their warranty or the return policies or their customer service. Other features that are nice to have are things like a preheat button. Although I don't usually preheat my air fryer, sometimes I do, and just having that quick one press button is super handy. I also love air fryers when they have a shake reminder button because it's like so easy to get distracted doing other things, especially if you're a busy mom and you forget to rotate the food and then things are sometimes unevenly cooked. And for some people, they really love to have the Bluetooth connection. They love to have the ability to talk to their smart device and tell it to turn the air fryer on. I have air fryers that do have that functionality, but honestly, I never use it. So it's not super important to me, but for others, it might be important. Now I just gave you a whole lot of information to consider. Let's tailor it down to what you need. And remember, I have all of the links to these air fryers down in the description box below. So if you are a college student with limited space, I recommend the Kasori Light four quart air fryer. Yes, it's a four quart, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I have two daughters that have been in college and this is what they've used in their small apartments. And it's worked great for just the one or two of them. It's not necessarily ideal to make a whole bunch of food for for your whole apartment or dorm room, but if you're just cooking for yourself, then this is a good choice. It's nice and compact, and it comes in some cute different colors. If you're an empty nester or a solo cooker, or maybe you're somebody that's more experienced with life, I'm really liking the six quart Kasori Turbo Blaze Air Fryer. The interface is at the top, so there's no kneeling down, bending over, trying to look at it. The numbers are really big, it's easy to read, the buttons are easy to push, and it doesn't take a ton of space on the counter either. I've really been liking the functionality of this particular air fryer. Are you looking for more of a family sized air fryer? Well, I've got to admit that there are definitely times that I'm running two separate air fryers at the same time, which is a ton of fun actually, but really any of these six quart air fryers are super awesome. These work out great for side dishes, vegetables, and I've even done sheet pan meals in these and they just really do turn out fantastic. So the six quart air fryers that I typically use and love is the Kasori Dual Blaze, the Kasori Pro 2, which has been my longest lasting, long time favorite. And new to the house is the Kasori Turbo Blaze, which is also working out great for my family. I also really do love this nine quart instant Versazone air fryer. It has the ability to cook two different things at the same time at two completely different temperatures, or you can remove this divider and then you've got this huge amount of space to cook up a lot more food for your family. Are you someone that wants to avoid the Teflon coated air fryers? This is a question I get asked a lot as well. I have tested out two ceramic coated air fryers and of the two, I recommend the Yeti air fryer more than the Paula Deen air fryer. These are nice large air fryers. They have plenty of room inside of them. The Yeti air fryer comes with a, several different accessories. Not sure that I will ever use them, but you do get a good bang for your buck. However, there are some downsides to the ceramic coated air fryers. At least the ones that I've tested, they get pretty hot on the outside. After running for a little while, it gets to about 100 degrees on the outside surface, which is not great if you have small people running around. And the other thing that I don't love about this one is that it has slots all along the side. So if I'm doing something with a marinade or some juicy fats and things, there could be times that it's leaking out and making a little bit more of a mess. I don't love, love, love the interface, but it gets the job done and it is ceramic coated instead of the Teflon coated, which I know for some people is really important. Maybe you're a price conscious consumer and you're just kind of wanting to test air fryers out before you really dive in, I highly recommend just waiting for the sales. You're usually going to see these come on sale always around Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Prime Day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. You're guaranteed to get a good deal on an air fryer, but don't go too cheap. Appointment? What the? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. Our nuts! Appointment! Oh, my Atlantic Ocean. I don't even know if this is going to run.
but do follow my guidelines. Buy from a good, reputable brand so you have a good, positive experience with your starter air fryer. You could usually find a four to six quart air fryer anywhere between $80 and $100 during one of these prime shopping seasons. As of right now, the end of 2023, who knows what inflation is going to do, right? If you are the person that likes convenience and doesn't want to worry about rotating or flipping food, then the Kasori Dual Blaze is your air fryer. It has the burner on the top as well as the bottom. So it's cooking from both sides. It has a removable grate. So sometimes I just cook right there in the bottom of the pan and food turns out really great. The tray is a little bit of a pain to clean, but when I'm cooking just in that pan, oh my goodness, it's so easy. Or maybe you are the ultimate lazy cook like me and you are looking for the most hands-off experience. You want an air fryer that's going to tell you exactly what to do step-by-step. Step. Then the Dreo Chef Maker is the high contender in this department. It has an incredible intuitive interface that really just takes you through the whole cooking process step by step and it has this amazing probe that goes right inside your food and you can tell this cooker what temperature to cook the meat to and then you just walk away and it does it all for you. The technology of this unit is pretty dang amazing. It entails processes of different span feeds, it uses moisture, it uses hot air. It really turns out great with the results but there is a price to pay for it. It is priced higher than traditional air fryers, but it really does produce fantastic results. And you can literally just walk away, forget about it. You won't overcook food. You won't burn food. It just, it's cooked perfectly. And if you are a tech lover, if you love Bluetooth, if you love buttons and gadgets and cool things like that, then I would say the Dreo Chef Maker that I just talked about or the Kasori Dual Blaze that also has a Bluetooth option and an app that takes you through a more guided cooking process. Those are probably both units that you're going to love. Now let me know which air fryer you decide to buy. And if you're looking for more specific in-depth air fryer reviews, I got links to those down in the description box as well. Now if you watch this, you're going to see all the things you can make in your air fryer and then this one is going to help you get started using it. Hit like if this was super helpful and I'll see you on the next video.